Hey guys, and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing a edit in the style of John Olson or Yun Olson. Uh, if you haven't heard who he is, I definitely recommend you go and check out his Instagram. We will link it down below. Um, but first of all, uh, make sure you go check out my Instagram. That's Sebastian underscore JWB. Um, go and follow me over there, and also go and follow my brother Matthew underscore GKB. Uh, he's also got some photos on his, so go follow him over there. Hey guys. Um, so before we get into this video, I just want to say really quickly that we will be creating a Yun Olsen style preset pack that will be created by us and it will also be posted on our website so check the top link in the description there will also be a discount code there that lasts for the first five to seven days dependent on what we decide um, so make sure you go and grab that discount and get yourself a preset pack uh, but without any further ado let's get into this video so the idea is today we're going to be editing in the style of Yun Olsen um, so this is the photo we're going to be using now now a lot of people have asked when they're editing if they need to edit in raw or with JPEG um, today we're going to be attempting to do one edit with a JPEG photo and we're going to be attempting to do one edit with a raw photo if we have enough time um, and if the JPEG photo doesn't turn out so well. So this is the JPEG photo. I downloaded this off the internet. Um, it is a stock photo. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to scroll down to camera calibration. And if you look at some of Jan Olsen's uh, photos, you can see he has this very nice teal and orange effect going on. Um, so we're going to do that immediately. The first thing you do, come down to camera calibration and get the red primary slider and drag it all the way to the right and get the blue primary slider and drag it all the way to the left. Now immediately you get these very nice summery orange and teal tones in your image. Um, you'll probably find if you've got a raw photo you won't need to drag them all the way, you may need to adjust the saturation of each. Now we are going to drop down the saturation of the red ever so slightly just because we don't want the skin color to be too overblown in orange and you can see his photos are in fact actually kind of a muted sort of orange colors. So we're going to drag down the red there and we're also going to get the blue and maybe drag that down in the saturation slightly as well but not too much. Okay once you've done that you're going to close that up. Okay so I dropped the saturation down here to minus 20 previously uh, because you can see if I leave this on zero it is too oversaturated. Um, Jan Olsen's photos aren't ridiculously oversaturated but they are very bright and summery so we're going to make sure the saturation isn't too low but again isn't too high it's just sort of nice moderate in between. The second thing you can do is come up to the temperature and tint slider. Again, if we go and look at some more of his photos, you'll see some of them are either very orange or some of them are either ridiculously blue. Now, in this photo, we have um, the main focus of the photo is the girl in the front, which is mostly orange, and then the background is blue. So I'm thinking we'll probably have to go for a more uh, orange colour, but we are going to try sliding it down to blue and see what colour we get there. Um, so we get kind of nice colours in blue. Again, if we slide up to orange, it actually looks a little bit too fake in orange. So I'm going to drag it down to blue. Now the problem once you've done that, the background looks a fairly natural blue slash white colour, but the problem is the foreground, her skin's also gone a very odd pasty blue orange. So we're going to come down to the HSL slider and we're going to try and correct for that now. First thing you want to do is select all, come down to saturation and then get the red, increase the red and increase the orange just until we get that colour back in the foreground that we initially had that we were looking for. Um, you can also adjust the oranges as well. Now if you find that the blues are too much you can also desaturate the blues as well ever so slightly like that or you can increase the blues more. Um, I'm going to probably increase the blues slightly and decrease the aquas and probably also drop down the greens as well. Now the purple and magenta aren't really going to do anything because they're not playing any parts in this image. You can't really see any of those colours. Okay, so that's the saturation slider done and the next thing you could do is play around with the hue sliders. Um, all this will do will change the colour to whatever colour you want. So for example here if I select the blue slider and I drag it left it makes it teal. If I drag it to the right it makes it more purple. Um, I'm going to just probably drag it ever so slightly up to the right just because I don't want to overdo it on the teals. Um, as for the aqua slider does the same sort of thing, I'm going to drag that again up to about plus 13. Uh, one thing you can do is drag the blues down and the aquas up. Sometimes that gives for a nice effect. In fact, I'm actually kind, kind of liking how that's looking. Okay, so I'm not really going to mess around too much more with hues because mainly we did those down below in the camera calibration section. The next thing I want to do is come down to the luminance and this is just the brightness of each individual colour. Again, looking at Jan Olsen, we have um, very bright images. Um, we're going to ignore the snow ones here. Um, so his colours here, they pop. They've got a lot of structure, a lot of clarity. Um, you can see the clarity on his skin. Um, so we're going to mess around with that in a minute. And the first thing I'm going to do is just mess around with the colours. Uh, you see if I drop down the blues, you can see more of the blues. If I make them brighter, it's a sort of more summery bright image. Um, I'm going to increase those as well. Um, again, because if you look back at some of his images, if we look at one from during the day, you can see the photo is actually quite bright. We're kind of getting that similar look going on now. Okay, so we're probably done here. Um, probably don't need to adjust the reds anymore. 
maybe drop down the reds. Um, don't want to drop down the oranges too much because you can see that begins to look weird. Again, I don't want to go too bright because then it looks a little bit too um, light roomed. So probably drop down the oranges. I would say no lower than minus two in this case. Now well, there is a limit to what we can do because this is a JPEG photo as I mentioned at the beginning, but if we press the backslash key on our keyboard, you can see the before and the after. So this is the before and this is the after. You can see it's gone from a sort of horrible muddy green color to a nice summery blues and oranges. Okay, so we're just going to close that up now and we're going to have a look at the split toning. All split toning does is we can select a color with our hue slider and then we can increase the saturation and put that color into our highlights or into our shadows. Pressing Alt on your keyboard, you can drag that slider along until you get a color that you like the look of. Now you're either going for a teal color in your highlights, so somewhere around 200 would do nicely, or you're going for an orange color in your highlights, so somewhere probably around 360 or... Um, 30 something around there so I'm gonna go for 30 and just see what that looks like increase the um, saturation until I get something that I like the look of um, so in this case we're going for about 22 if I turn it off maybe we've gone a little bit too high on that so let's go for half of that and go for about um, 10 or 11 okay so then you come into the shadows and do the same thing thing press alt on your keyboard and then drag it up until you get those teal colors in this case it's about 170 180 something around there then get the saturation, drag that up until you get something that you like the look of as well. Um, I'm going to leave that on about 6. Now if I turn it off and on again, you can see the slight difference it makes to the image. It doesn't do an awful lot, but it definitely does do something. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is come back to the basics panel. We haven't done a lot on the basics panel, mainly because there's not a lot you can do with JPEG images. You're mostly trying to correct the colors as little as you can with these JPEG photos. Um, now you can either increase the highlights to make the image even brighter, or well, we can decrease the highlights. Now you'll notice with JPEG images there's not a lot you can save from the highlights. So one thing I do recommend doing is if you've got a summary photo, sometimes just go all out and completely brighten up those highlights just to make it look even more um, summary, midday and look slightly more professional. Um, then you can get the shadows and drop the shadows or lift up the shadows. In this case, we're gonna try and increase a little bit of contrast. Now you can do that with the contrast slider, so we're gonna just increase a little bit there to about plus 15. Um, and you can do the same with the whites and lift up those and drop the blacks as well. And now you can see we're beginning to get a lot of dark shadows in the hair. Um, so at this point we may want to actually just back off slightly with what we've done with the contrast um, and the blacks and just lift those up slightly. Okay, so that is that. If we press the before and the after, just have another look at what we've done. Okay, so we're now going to mess around with the clarity slider. Uh, if I increase the clarity, you can see it does begin to look slightly weird. However, you can see how these... The clarity in this image does also relate ever so slightly to the clarity in Jan Olsen's photos. So you can see here, you can actually see the clarity on his skin where you've got these dark and you can see a lot of the details on his skin. He hasn't got very smooth skin in these photos. Now you often get this effect by increasing clarity. Now obviously clarity at plus 100 just looks weird. Um, so we're going to reset that and we're going to drag it probably up to around plus 20 something around there. Nothing too much, nothing too noticeable but definitely so you can see the effect that it's having on the image. Um, okay, so that's it for the basic slider. We're not going to mess any more around with that. Okay, so we're now going to come onto the tone curve. I've put one dot in the center. If you're not on this setting, just click this little icon here um, and you can then move on to the correct graph. I just prefer using this one. I have more control. Um, you can then also increase the little bit of fade into the shadows if you like and then add an extra bit of contrast. So we're not going to do anything more with the tone curve just because it's a JPEG image and we can't really do an awful lot without it beginning to look odd. Um, now down for the detail, you can either here um, try and get rid of some of your noise if you've got a nighttime photo, alternatively you can make your image slightly sharper. Now for Jan Olsen's photos, his images tend to be quite sharp, so I'm going to increase the sharp sharpness to about 25. Okay, and that's probably about it. I wouldn't really recommend doing much more with this image. Again, if I press the before image, you can see the before and then the after. So you can see the difference that makes if I put them right next to each other. Okay, so you can see that's the before photo and that's the after photo. Now. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you guys are interested, follow the link down below in the description. There will be a preset pack that you can buy of uh, Jan uh, Olsen style presets that we will create ourselves. Um, there will probably be a pack of six, maybe eight presets, and there will also be a discount code next to that link that will be valid for the first five to seven days that this preset pack is available. Um, so make sure you go and buy one of those if you guys are interested. If not, I uh, hope this video was useful for you. Um, and if you want to see me do any more edits, like raw edits, then let me know and I will do one of those in the coming future. Other than that, guys, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to live long and prosper.
So that's it guys, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to go check us out on our Instagram and I will see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.